Hello viewers, welcome to the another session of Postgraduate Diploma in Environmental and Occupational Health in MEVE 004 that is the industrial sector. So in that today we would like to discuss about another industry that is a pharmaceutical industry and then what type of hazards, environmental hazards as well as the occupational hazards and then we will see that what are the management techniques. So we know that we have already discussed much about so many industrial standards. You must have read in MEV, 0, MEV 004 that is the uh, environmental law and management. In that also you must have studied that how the industrial standards uh, are putting forward for the some of the criteria for the all types of industries depends upon the type of industry. So industrial standards what they are, they are a set of criteria within an industry which are related to the standard functioning and also that carrying the operations in their respective fields of production. So we can also think about it, it is the uh, generally accepted requirements which are followed by the members of any of that industry. So what they will do that those industrial standards, they will provide an orderly as well as a systematic formulation, adoption or application of standards which are used in particular industry or particular sector of that economy. So these industrial standards, they may vary from one industry to the another one depends upon their production. So these industrial standards, they will facilitate global as well as the domestic competitiveness. So it is a crucial tool for developing and meeting industry goals. For example, in the automotive industry, tire size as well as the durability that will fall within a standardized range. So this type of standardization serves as a quality check for any of the industry. So the government released a new categorization of industry based on their pollution load in 2016. So this type of recategorization of industries based on their pollution load, it is a very big scientific exercise for the policy makers. So the Ministry of Environment and Forest as well as the Climate Change, it has been developed the criteria of categorization of industrial sectors based on the pollution index that is a function of the emissions that is the air pollutants or otherwise water pollutants that is effluents and hazardous waste generated and also the consumption of the resources of particular industry. So for this purpose, the references are taken from the water that is the prevention and control of pollution and uh, that is a water cess amendment act 2003 and standards so far which are already prescribed for various pollutants under environmental protection act uh, in 1986 uh, and also the uh, dune valley notification 1989 which is issued by the MOEFCC. So the pollution index normally we can call it as from now onwards that is a PI of any industrial sector is given a number from 0 to 100 and also that is a grading and the increasing value of PI that represents the increasing degree of pollution load from that particular industrial sector. So the purpose of the categorization is to ensure that the industry is established in a manner which is consistent with the environmental objectives. So this new criteria will prompt industrial sectors, they have to, it is a mandate and also willing to adopt cleaner technologies. So ultimately resulting in the generation of the lesser number of pollutants. So another important feature of this categorization system is facilitating self-assessment by the industries themselves as the subjectivity of the earlier assessment that has been eliminated. So this recategorization is a part of efforts, policies and objectives of present government to create a clean and transparent working environment in the country and also to promote the ease of doing business. So the execution part will become very easy once the set of standardized the standards are there. So industrial sectors having pollution index that is a scoring of a 60 and above, they have been categorized in a red category. And some industries which are having the pollution index score of 41 to 59 is a orange category. 
and also if it is the score is 21 to 40 that is a green category and and also the uh, up to 20 then we can call them as a white category. So pharmaceutical industry is in the range of orange category which required environmental clearance. So the new category of white category so the industries which fall under this category is practically non-pollutant and also there is no requirement for the uh, environmental clearance for uh, those industries. So hazardous chemicals and waste they are, uh, there are lot of public health issues of the global concern. So today children are born pre-polluted we can say that and also the, there are so many uh, statistical studies are there they are measuring at least dozens if not hundreds of toxics and also other hazardous chemicals in children before birth. It is very surprising factor and also it, if we will listen to this it is very agonizing factor. So that means pre hazardous that means chemicals in children before birth through their mother's exposure. So pediatricians already noted that a silent pandemic of disease and disability which is associated with the exposure to the toxic substances as well as the pollution during the childhood. So many of such cases are there and also which do not manifest themselves for years or decades. And health effects which are associated with the chemical exposure like damage to body organs, cancer, asthma, diabetics as well as the birth defects and also there are so many other ill effects are there. So the pharmaceutical industry that qualifies to be a significant component of healthcare systems around the globe without having any medication, I do not think so, any house must be existing. So pharmacies they are the public as well as the private enterprises which are into the research and development. Apart from research and development they market the medicines to check as well as the treat ailments and diseases and also some of the bodily disorders. So the production of pharmaceutical products that leads to enormous waste generation and this has become a prime concern in the present scenario. That means we know that any industry they will definitely emit pollutants as well as the effluents into the environment. But especially the pharmaceutical industry because they are medicines, they are drugs. So the chemical composition must be vary from one medicine to the other. So the life cycle of pharmaceutical product that there are various stages like synthesis, extraction, purification of the active pharmaceutical ingredient that is API which is followed by the preclinical animal as well as the clinical human studies and commercial scale manufacture, marketing of drugs and use by the patients, disposal of unwanted pharmaceuticals that is uh, once it is expired there are so many um, tablets we are throwing out into the atmosphere. And also the basic component of any pharmaceutical drug is known as API that is active pharmaceutical ingredient. So normally it is called it as a drug substances. So the active pharmaceutical ingredient is part of any drug that produces its effects. So some drugs like the combination uh, therapies they have multiple active ingredients to treat different symptoms or act in different ways. That means 2-3 diseases or 2-3 sicknesses can be cured by only one medicine. That means there are many APIs must be there. So all drugs which are made up of two core components that is the API which is the central ing ingredient that means that is the true medicine and the second part which is associated with this is excipient that means the substance inside the drug which helps to deliver the medication to our body system. So excipients are chemically inactive substances like mineral oil for in a simple example for instance. If you have a headache so acetaminophen is the active ingredient while the liquid in the capsule or the bulk of that pill is the excipient. So most of the from the previous uh, decades we can see that 
a key ingredient in any anti cancer drug was made from the bark of the pacific yew tree this is for example just i would like to share with you that takes about 200 years to mature and is found in sensitive ecosystems so that means a medicine for cancer which is made up of the bark of the pacific yew tree so how many years to get it mature 200 years for one particular tree just imagine that how the sensitive ecosystems we have so the drug companies they were able to switch to an european yew tree which is widely cultivated but processing the ingredient which is involved using a lot of chemicals and other resources almost including 13 solvents so we have to understand that how difficult to synthesize a particular drug for particular disease so there are so many hazards which are involved with this one with the people occupational hazards environmental hazards and then uh, the formulation of the drugs and then so many procedures which are involved in particularly in pharmaceutical industry so we will see some of the environmental hazards if we will look into the biological hazards what type of biological hazards especially this pharmaceutical industry will pose through pharmacy staff for example patients and hospital visitors those who wants to visit the doctor they will contaminate that is they will found in the air water as well as food and that is also aggravated due to the lack of the proper ventilation system and also the water supplies and irregular monitoring of the microbial growth that is a part of the biological hazards if you will look into the chemical hazards so in that api in drugs that is the antibiotics as well as the uh, aerosolized drugs some some drugs maybe and then hormonal drugs and uh, alcohol hand sanitizers and detergents like this and also the if you will see the electrical hazards they may have the accidental uh, short circuits and the use of appliances by the untrained workers this is most important point untrained or unskilled persons handle the any electrical appliances there is a hundred percent chance to have the accident and mechanical hazards are also there that is this is also applicable to untrained or the unskilled persons so the handling of the machinery as well as the equipment both large as well as the small scale in operation theaters hospitals and uh, r d laboratories like this if you will see the psychological hazards that means uh, we have seen in many newspapers we have read many news also abuse by the co-workers there's a violence and medical emergencies work stress depression anxiety sleep disorders and also excessive work working hours and uh, that there is a shift in work and then uh, excessive workload exposure to irritating noise levels and poor indoor ventilation so most of the pharmaceuticals as well as the uh, other associated products they are deposited in the environment through uh, human consumption and uh, and by the these are the uh, some of the areas we have to look into that and metabolic excretion thereafter it is a continuous process so the high solubility of these most pharmaceutical wastage have adverse effect on the aquatic life also not only for the human beings not only for the general environment and also for the for the marine or the aquatic animals so this may also adversely affect marine ecosystem and also habitats and are indirectly dependent on the water also so we will see that now so these are the most important uh, uh, waste which is generated from the pharmaceutical industry and then there are so many drugs antibiotics and then medical formulas and then synthesis and then solvents which they are using and then ultimately they are throwing into the general environment so now we will see that how can we manage this waste as well as the hazards which are posed by this especially this industry so the first management technique is a minimization of course and then reduction reuse or recycle and also the appropriate disposal so this is applicable for the all industries not only for this particular industry but these are the most important one has to keep it in mind 
So, for example, the pharmaceutical in industry generates up to 220 pounds of waste for every 2 pounds of drug produced. So, just imagine that. So, what type of uh, uh, hazards they are posing and then what type of management techniques one has to adopt. So, for that also there is a green chemistry. Green chemistry formulas are the green uh, formulation of the any product. So, is uh, recognized as a scientific approach within uh, uh, this uh, uh, synthetic chemistry for more than two decades. So, it is a broad concept, but it is most frequently which associated with the efforts um, at the hazard reduction. So, that is most important. So, I would like to give a brief intro about this uh, green chemistry also because it is a widely accepted definition if I can say that as proposed by the founders of this field that is the <coughs> Paul Anastas. Uh, so, the utilization of a set of principles that reduces or eliminates the use or generation of hazardous substances in the design itself that means in the manufacture as well as the application of the chemical products. So, United States EPA notes that the green chemistry that applies across the life cycle of a chemical product including its design, manufacture, use and uh, finally ultimate uh, disposal. So, if you will see that the Green Chemistry and Commerce Council they are going together and they describe that the important role of the product developers, manufacturers, brands and also the retailers in implementing green chemistry principles noting that they can also do this by changing design specifications, sourcing materials that is the raw materials and products and also which incorporate into the green chemistry practices the changing manufacturing practices to substitute or to reduce the use of the hazardous chemicals and developing and implementing policies uh, which can restrict the chemicals of concern in the products they source and then make or otherwise they can sell. So, with all these I would like to conclude that the pharmaceutical uh, products they have been used for many years. It is not that just like a, it is a only one part because they are giving a better life to all human beings. So, these industries are of course very relevant in the uh, present context where people as well as technology they are in a very advanced in terms of finding cure to many ailments. So, what these industries uh, uh, will do besides uh, producing the life saving drugs as well as the life enhancing products, they will also simultaneously harming the general environment in various ways. So, the hazardous and non-hazardous waste which are generated by these industries, they are causing the life threats to few species of animals and also the causing many deformities, uh, deformities in people, those who are exposed to such waste. So, the chemical components of these industries, they will enter into our earth system through uh, different pathways through air pollution, through water pollution, soil pollution like this. So, especially in India, they are growing by the uh, in very fast, uh, but there are uh, no set of strict regulations in which uh, we can talk about the uh, constraining the environmental hazards which are caused by the uh, manufacturing of these products. So, there are many reports of contaminated water bodies in uh, areas where um, uh, where these uh, industries are located especially. So, there is a need of strict regulations to be adopted during the manufacture as well as the disposal of enormous uh, waste which are generated through these industries. So, the industries are adopting green chemistry as a solution of these problems which will definitely eliminate or minimize such environmental hazards in the years to come. So, with this I would like to conclude in the next session we will come up with the other industry. Thank you.